Hey folks, uh, back with another video. Um, if you guys remember when my torches got stolen, I promised you guys a filigree or slash Zenfirico uh, or ribbon cane demo. They're all the same thing. Um, and for lack of a better term, whatever you want to call it, we are going to call it twisty cane because that is the general principle of uh, this technique here is twisting up uh, your glass and to get all different styles and patterns of twisty cane and so the basics here is in this first video is me building or one way of me building a flat cane for the ribbon in this video I'm going to show you five uh, five different ways and after you learn the basics um, there are many many more different methods and ways of doing this and you can be creative and elaborate on your own uh, so for right now uh, like I said, I am building a flat cane. The first uh, technique I'm going to show you is what I like to call the fill a tube up method, um, which is, in my opinion, by far the, one of the easiest as well as the most productive um, to get a bunch of bang for your buck, so to speak. Uh, this is a really, really simple technique, folks, um, and you can get a whole bunch of prep done for pennies on the dollar. You don't have to be spending ridiculous amounts of money on pre-made, you know, fancy worded Zenfira cocaine because this is exactly what the other guy is doing when they're selling it to you for $80 a pound and, you know, you could buy clear for $3.75, maybe $4 a pound at the most, um, add a little bit of color. You could even do it with fume, um, silver, gold fume, and uh, make yourself a whole lot of material for, like I said, pennies on the dollar folks you definitely do not need to be spending 60 to 80 bucks a pound on this stuff uh, when you can make it yourself in a matter of minutes and the quality will be just as good and like I said it only costs you about whatever the, the cost of clear plus a, a small amount of color um, but here we go okay folks so there's definitely uh, more than one way of doing this but there's two very basic methods and that's one with color on the inside and one with color on the outside and then you can get creative and make variations of your own. Um, but for color on the inside, um, we are gonna make a flat cane of solid color. Um, and as you see here, folks, I'm already well underway of making it. I start with uh, my one rod of white, which I attach directly straight on. Uh, that'll be my center color. And I put that right on the edge of my eight mil punding. I put a couple pieces of Siberia blue from Paul Troutman on either side of that, and then some jet black on either side of that, making for this uh, flat cane. I'm gonna sink a bunch of heat base into it right now, get it melted in as well as I can, obviously without boiling any of the colors. Uh, and then I'm gonna pull it down, and this is gonna go on the inside of the ribbon or twisty cane. Um, it can be called, again, Zinferico, Filigree, Ribbon, Latticino. Um, there's many different um, ways to articulate it depending on how proper, fancy, Italian, modern, piper, etc. you want to be about the whole spiel. Um, but again, the basic idea of it is twisty cane. Alright, and I'm going to just sort of speed up here to... Uh, through the heating up process but uh, there is definitely a few things to take note of and one is that when you're melting in this uh, pre-built uh, flat cane um, is that you don't really want to thin it out too much you'd rather do more of a, a condensing and keep the rods sort of as thick as possible you definitely do some shaping in the L Marver um, as well as using my uh, rectangle square paddle um, and that's gonna sort of keep it in this uh, thickened up sort of shape, uh, shape you know kind of kind of like a uh, like a when you do a pull down you know sometimes it can get really thin on you and uh, you want to keep this you want to do the opposite you want to sort of keep this as thick as possible while maintaining um, a sort of shape of a flat bar uh, so to speak uh, and you know there's there's a picture of it right there folks that's all you really need not a big deal right and there is the finished or cold flat cane with some cut up sticks of four millimeter rod and my one inch tubing um, or more precisely it's 25 by four millimeter wall thickness tubing and this is why we call it the fill a tube up obviously as you can tell we stuffed the flat cane inside there along with the four millimeter rods 
folks, and in this next sort of video clip, I'm going to be melting down uh, that piece of prep that you saw me make with the flat cane and the four millimeter rods stuffed inside the glass tubing of one inch. Um, take a look there, make sure that you know how I wipe off with a paper towel. Uh, when you put glass pieces in the kiln, they can get really dusty. Uh, the kiln brick, the kiln dust, it just sort of gets everywhere. And especially if uh, you have any like static electricity charged into the piece while it's cold, it'll just stick all over that glass and you really don't want to get it melted in. So I personally, I use a, uh, a dry uh, paper towel uh, to wipe it off. It's definitely flammable, so be super careful when you use it on your bench. I've just noticed that every now and then when I use the Kevlar or other mats uh, that that you know that they have out there for glass, whether it's Kevlar or the heat defense, um, you know, sitting around in the shop for a long time, they collect dust, and then in turn they can accidentally wipe that dust onto your glass. Um, so I always just use a fresh piece of paper towel, just because I know that it's clean, and um, and then it'll keep my glass clean, which is you know super important stuff. So after warming it up in the kiln and uh, brushing any dust off, you want to start by melting down the very end of it, as you can see here, and closing closing off the 25 mil point uh, so that it's airtight. Um, and you can see I'm giving it a little uh, suck on the end there. Um, the opposite of glass blowing, I guess you call it glass sucking. I don't know, I'm sure there's a few jokes to be had there. Um, in any case, the uh, the idea here is to melt melt down um, your piece of prep, the 25 mil, the flat cane, and all the four mil rod. Uh, start all the way at the end and gradually, uh, with as much heat as you can sink into the glass, uh, move your way towards your uh, blow tube. Um, and if you need to give it a little suck like that right there to get the air out, um, kind of like when you're encasing opals, you know? Um, obviously the, the preferred method, if, if, uh, if I were doing this on a larger scale, um, to scale it up, I would use a vacuum, uh, just like a vac stack. I would hook up a blow hose and um, get all the air out under vacuum pressure. Um, but this is just such a small piece of prep. Um, and you can see it's just a 25 mil point, but you know, that turns into like a one inch rod with your ribbon in the middle. Uh, and in turn uh, turns into a whole lot of prep. Uh, one thing, folks, though, that I would like to stress um, is while you are sucking the air out of the glass, do not breathe it in. Um, obviously, uh, it's not good for you. It can't be good for you. Um, I myself have personally been doing this for over 20 years. I've been tested for metals by the doctor, um, especially because the whole cadmium scare that our industry went through a couple years ago and me and everyone else I know that have been tested nobody has uh, tested positive for any trace metals or in, in their blood or anything but it still can't be good for you so try not to breathe it in okay um, and here you'll see halfway through you can see the four mil rods that are melted in there and uh, how there's no air at all uh, on the on the, on the front of the point where I started melting it out. And now as I work my way back towards my uh, blow tube handle, I have added um, an eight millimeter rod to the end of that to uh, help hold, hold the entire piece of prep more stable while I'm finishing off the back end. Um, all right, folks, I am gonna just sort of speed up um, the rest of this melting down process. You guys get the idea. I uh, make sure you suck all the air out of it yada 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 and then here i'm going to show you at the very end is the final product um which will be my my uh one inch uh tubing um with all the good stuff inside the flat cane the four mil rod all the air sucked out of it and on the end of an eight millimeter handle <clears throat> and um this is this is the way i sort of like to keep my prep um, until I'm actually going to use it, um, just because instead of having a whole bunch of finished filigree stringers and um, rods hanging around, um, you can just leave it in this sort of uh, one inch rod status until you're going to use it. Um, yeah, until I'm ready to use it like, uh, like I am now. Uh, so it's warmed up in the kiln, uh, obviously notice how I brush off the dust, always brushing, always brushing off the dust. Um, and 
um, there's another quick look. Uh, so this next sort of part is, um, it's really going to be all up to you on your spin rate, meaning like how fast you are spinning or twirling uh, the flat cane um, or your one inch piece of prep as you melt it down. All right, and then I'm just going to fast forward a little bit while I uh, sink a bunch of heat into the front half of this prep here. Um, grabbing another eight millimeter rod in my right hand and getting it all nice and hot sealed on there. And what you're going to see now is me spinning and twirling uh, as fast as I can uh, with my right hand. And so here's a little, I guess not fast, but there's a little dem there's a little sort of idea of what we're doing, right? And you're gonna be pulling and spinning at the same time. And now depending on how fast you pull and how quick you spin, uh, you might need to counter spin with your opposite hand with your left hand spinning one direction with your right hand and the other direction with your left hand all while pulling out you know kind of like patting yourself on the top of your head and rubbing your belly and hopping on one foot you know kind of a little bit of a dance so to speak but uh you get the idea right um and you know doing this you know it takes some practice it'll take a few times uh, you're gonna have to sort of decide what spin rate works for you you can you know, you can, you'll notice that if you don't spin it fast enough, it sort of looks more like a lazy, wavy cane. And if you spin it really fast, you get this really cool, like, helix effect. Um, and that's sort of what I meant earlier, folks, by twisty cane. The, the basic idea is spinning, twisting, and pulling. Whether your color's on the inside, your color's on the outside, you have a varying color pattern. Um, you can sort of see right there in that little... When I hold it up to the camera, the fast spin uh, versus the slow spin and the, the different sort of look you can get. Um, so this is something that you're going to have to use your own creative judgment and uh, figuring out what works best for you. Um, you know, that machine pulled uh, Zanfirico stuff that you can buy is only going to look one way because it's made in a machine. And... And they're also ripping you off selling it to you for 80 bucks a pound. So this way you can put your own sort of, uh, you know, creative touch on it or creative spin. Yeah, there you go. Pun intended. Ha ha ha. Um, and uh, another, another reason is perfect example right here is another reason why I like to keep it all in the, the one inch sort of like bigger rod until I'm ready to use it is because I can tear off exactly how much I need and then put the rest in the kiln for a later date. Uh, you know, when you buy the machine pulled stuff, um, another sort of downside is that you have all of this like large sort of like rod, you know, whatever, eight millimeter, seven millimeter uh, that it comes in um, stock that you have hanging around. So this way you can sort of just tear off as much as you need, spin it, uh, you know, spin it, pull it down into a stringer. If you're only going to make a few pipes for that day, a few pieces, whatever, uh, just tear off as much as you need, however much you want to use, and then you can save that other fat chunk. Uh, in the kiln um, for easy storage for a later day. Um, and actually, and, and so one other cool reason for keeping the sort of fat, fatty rod prep um, is that something I'm about to do here uh, for a uh, for project um, is something that you definitely can't do with that machine pulled crap is have a large fat chunk with just a slow spin on it. So if you want to say a, a nice horn for a pipe, that right there, folks, is awesome. That that would be a sweet horn, nice attachment for a pipe. Um, but actually what I'm going to do with it here is I'm going to keep it. It's about one inch. It's the tail end of my prep. Um, and I spun it up just a little bit into, into a horn. And, um, you know, I could use this as a horn on a pipe. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in this sort of cone, sort of Christmas ornament type shape that you see right there. And I'm going to later on, I'm going to cover it and roll it and frit. And then I'm going to cut the sides off. And it is going to look fucking cool. It is going to look pretty badass. But anyways, there you go, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And 
Let's see if I can sneak a shot. Oh yeah, here we go. That's the sort of finished um, product that you see here. Um, there's a couple other colors in there that you'll see. Uh, those are gonna be demonstrations for uh, my next video and uh, four other ways. So this is the first way to fill a tube up. And the other ways are 50-50 split over clear flat rod. Uh, you can do a bipolar, uh, which is with any of the above methods. And the last one is to squish hollow line tubing into making a flat cane for any of the above. And here is just a few examples um, out of a book that I picked up of all the different kinds of filigree or Zanfirigo or Latticino or whatever you want to call it. Um, but here we're calling it Twisty Cane, folks, because that's what it is. Uh, and if you like this video, please subscribe. And if you'd like to become a patron of the arts, specifically a patron of my arts, please go to patreon.com slash Hubbard Glass. Uh, that's all, folks. Thanks.